All right, let's talk about Stone Blind. Stone Blind was a band, I want to say around the years 2013, 2014, and it is one of the predecessors to the band Ned. Now, what makes it a predecessor is this is the first project that me and Stevie Watkins was ever on together. Uh, and what makes it even more special is because of the other members that was in it too. James Sizemore, Jimmy Sizemore, Randall Sizemore, uh, and very loosely they was in it. You know, they only came in, James came in for one song, Jimmy came in, you know, because that was what James and Jimmy done. They played music together, so Jimmy came up jamming with us a couple times, never actually said he was in the band or anything like that. Uh, same way with Randall. Randall, once he get a few beers in him, he would come and jam some ACDC with us. So uh, it kind of gave us that more rocker attitude uh, that we didn't have before because a lot of our stuff was more country based. Uh, being in Eastern Kentucky, you know, that's what you did. You played country music or you didn't play music at all because no one wanted to fucking listen to it. But when I met Stevie, we didn't care if anybody listened to it. Um, I mean, we did, but that's kind of the formation of Ned is when we broke our country roots, per se, and started doing other things, uh, like punk and grunge, and uh, just experimenting with all different types of like Led Zeppelin-esque genres. Uh, more specifically, Led Zeppelin, the part of a uh, whole lot of love where it goes into some big acid breakdown, you know, that's what we really focused on. But the only uh, thing that we ever released through Stone Blind was the song Moonshiners. Uh, it might sound familiar to Ned fans because we redid the song and put it on our self-titled. But uh, the song was very special to me because James Sizemore's on it. You know, he's no longer with us and that's what makes it special to me because he was my brother. Uh, not by blood, but by spirit. By soul, by friendship, by anything but blood. We were brothers. Uh, later on, you know, if you can't tell, there was no standard lineup for the band besides the foundation which was me and Stevie so whenever we did a show later on we brought the, the name Stone Blind back and we made it uh, more of the Southport community as band that ever wanted that wanted to get up on stage uh, so that's what became Stone Blind and that's why later on down you know uh, the list you had you know you had me you had Stevie still still had James, you know, for that one show, you had uh, our Aunt Heather, you had our friend uh, Jared Abner, um, yeah, he come up, he sung a song with us time or two, uh, I think the song was Every Rose Has It's Thorn, or maybe Simple Man, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, thinking back on it, but yeah, that was, that's the story of Stone Blind, um, the only other thing I can think about Stone Blind, as I can tell you, is the logos and the album cover was done on Microsoft Paint, and we used some of the already established shapes on there, like the arrows, to create the logo, which was arrows pointing in every direction because we was all over the place and we didn't have one direction. Um, everything was done through Microsoft Paint, and the ba even the background was done through Microsoft Paint through a gradient, or gradient, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, I think it's gradient. But yeah, that, that's kind of what we did, and I, and I took it up there, and I showed Stevie, and showed James, and you know, that's what became of the album cover. The only thing I wish is that I had a better skill set back then to record. But to be relatively new at multi-track recording, I think I did exceptionally well. Maybe not quality-wise, but just structure-wise. Um, there is one more thing I'd like to say. Uh, we recorded half of the song, at Stevie's house, which was later known as the In and Out, we recorded half the song there, and then it stopped, and then we came back in, and the rest of the song was recorded at the original, uh, no, not the original, but South Fork Studios, when it actually went to South Fork for the first time, the original South Fork Studio studio, not the original South Fork Studios that was on Quicksand, um, the second iteration of South Fork Studios. So, um, the rest of the song was me, because we never finished the song, and it was it was very hard for us to get takes for some reason. I'm not specifically sure why. I think it was just due to lack of recording knowledge and experience, 
and by this time I've done recorded with Whiplash and recorded with Glenn and you know I, I, I guess I thought I should take it upon myself to finish this song or it might not have never got done and they was very happy with the results you know for what it was so that's the story of Stone Blind people next uh, I don't know what we're going to do next I mean we'll probably talk about another band from you know either the era or era of today's time but you know we'll just keep doing it and until we cover all the bases um, then after that I'm gonna I'll try really hard to cover the rest of the bases that I can't think of off the top of my head and release a written version of the biography and it's kind of a, a dual biography from my standpoint also bloody breath studio standpoint I think it might have a couple quotations from somebody else in there but yeah um, it's basically an in-depth description start to finish of my life and Bloody Breath of Studios. So, I'll see y'all later.